And of course, if I, I suspect you probably also want to talk about some of the priming stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, the priming stuff is always very interesting. So uh, we, we've done a study together on achievement priming and how we can start mm -hmm. influencing the subconscious cognition of individuals to start designing systems that, that affect how people perform on certain tasks. So what are your thoughts on that and where, where do you think that's headed? One of the things that I've really gotten interested in lately is trying to understand uh, how people think. We know from some of the research out of psychology that a lot of human behavior is guided by what, by what Kahneman would call uh, system one thinking. Actually, let me stop there. Am I confused? System one is... Yeah, I think you're right. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me do that again. <laughs> we'll edit that part out. Now <laughs> nope, that one's going online. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Yeah, okay, can I revoke your, never mind. <laughs> that one's going online. Um, you're not going to do an outtake one, are you? Is, okay, good. That You never know. That's what you may have on the 50th, yeah. right? You may do outtakes. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so one of the interesting things that we're seeing coming out of psychology today is this recognition that the rational thinking decision maker is not really true. That upwards of 90% of human behavior is not controlled by rational cognition, uh, but rather it's run by non-conscious automatic cognition, uh, what Kahneman calls system one thinking. So most of our research and information system is based on this system two thinking, the very rational, thoughtful theory of planned behavior and all those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. So I think if we step back and take a cue from our colleagues in psych, we'll begin to realize we need to rethink a lot of our theories to account for the non-conscious cognition. So I've gotten very interested in that in individual decision making like web shopping and stuff like that, but also within the team realm as well with the idea is how can we design technology, whether it's team technology or whether it's shopping sites, to influence that non-conscious cognition. Um, in psychology, they've come up with this methodology that that's called priming, where they present a stimulus before somebody performs a task, whether the stimulus is words or sounds or pictures or whatever, with the idea that I'm going to plant something in working memory that will influence your behavior, or I will invoke a certain emotion and that will influence your behavior. So what I've gotten interested in is how can we design technology that can present words, images, uh, music. Uh, one of my colleagues said, all we need now is smells, because that will, uh, that will evoke some emotion. <laughs> so that we change what you're thinking about in working memory, or we change your emotions. And if we can play with those, we may induce you to do different behavior. So some of the studies that I've done, obviously, you've been a part of some of those. Uh, we found how we can make people more creative mm -hmm. and generate more ideas. Uh, we found how we can induce people to pay more for products on eBay, which I'm not sure is a good thing, but <laughs> if it's possible, it's better that we as researchers know about it before our colleagues uh, in industry start using it.